This morning, uh, we're starting a new series, and it's called Margin. And I am going to come down in the sound, turn a whole lot of stuff off so I'm not buzzing. Uh, but this series is really important to my heart. Um, because I see a lot of families, <clears throat> and us, at ASAP Church that run to the very max all the time. And we hit a wall, and we wonder, why did I hit that wall? <laughs> why did I hit that wall? So this morning is just an introduction to the series, Margin. And if you have your Bibles or your smartphones, uh, we're going to get right into it. So let's open up to Luke chapter 10. And that is where we're going to start talking about margin. As you're turning there or pulling out your phone, let me ask you guys if you could be real honest and participate with me. How many of you would say that you occasionally or often feel pretty stressed? Occasionally or often? See? Often. often. I got, I got someone with two hands and two feet up in the back. Okay? Hands up all over the place. Uh, how many of you say, bills are coming in still from Christmas, and that's a little stressful, but you put it on that, that little plastic thing. And, and, and maybe you got some things going on in your family, and uh, you feel work stressed out, occasionally financially stressed out, occasionally. Man, y'all blessed. <laughs> How many just can't never find time for themselves? Like, I just need time for myself Amen. and no one else. Like, I'm shutting the phone completely off and giving my kids away. <clears throat> How many say, I wish I had more time to spend with my family? Y'all don't love people so much. <laughs> Hands are going up because we live in a culture that pushes us to the limits of our life. Pushes us to our limit on every single thing. Every single thing. Buy more. Do more. Accomplish more. Conquer more. Men. Conquer more. <laughs> Bigger steak. You ate 12 ounce. I must eat 16. It even happens at that. Competition. Conquer more. Do more. More, 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 more. And I would argue today that most of us live an unbiblical and an unsustainable pace in our life. We cannot keep this crazy pace. Last month was very spiritual. Easter, Jesus rose from the dead. Uh, you know, baptism, we, we were resurrected with Christ. It's a very spiritual month. This month is very practical, okay? <laughs> Yeah, we had a great month. It was, oh, Jesus, gross in the day. But this month is very practical, but I, I learned something about God. If you want to go deeper spiritually, he's going to point you to something practical that you got to fix. And that's weird, isn't it? He goes, you want spiritual? Ah, you fix, fix this area in your finances. And you go, oh, Lord, what? I thought you were taking me higher spiritually. He goes, I am. I am. Fix this. Okay. It's insane, uh, what we call normal now. So much, it's crazy. I know seven and eight-year-olds that have something to do Monday through Friday, after school, every day of the week, and that is unsustainable. The parents are running around, feel like a taxi cab, better Uber or something. It's crazy. It's crazy. For many of us, the schedules now that we impose on our children are actually imposing on us. Right? If someone said, are you really enjoying your life? A lot of people in this room would say no. And I don't have time to talk about it because I got to go do something else. <laughs> huh? Virtually everyone I know has very little margin, margin in their life. Like, if something goes wrong, I'm sunk. I have no margin in my life. I have no room to breathe. I have no room to make a mistake. That's a very dangerous place. Uh, somebody might be saying, what is margin exactly? And there's a book, I want you to read it. 
Uh, it's by Dr. Richard Swenson, and it's called Margin. Come on, Michael. And uh, it's truly one of the best books around on the subject. Um, okay. Dr. Swenson. Richard Swenson. With, it's like Swanson, but with an E. Um, but what I want to talk to you about this week and the next three weeks is margin. And uh, from a leadership point of view, if, if, if you don't have margin in your life, uh, you can't lead anyone. From a parent's point of view, if you don't have margin in your life, you can't lead your kids properly. So let's lead really good. Amen? Amen. All right, so let's get a working definition for margin today. If you're taking notes, margin is the amount available beyond what is necessary. Amen? Amen? Margin is the amount available beyond what is necessary. I, I might define margin as this. Uh, this is my definition. It's the difference between what you have and what you need. Difference between what you have and what you need. It's very important. If I have 30 minutes to get somewhere and it takes me 20 minutes to get there, I have 10 minutes of margin, okay? If I have 100 bucks and my bills are 80, I got $20 of margin, okay? The difference between what you have and what you need. How does margin play in and out in our daily life? How, how does this work, okay? Uh, margin would be showing up five or 10 minutes early for work so you can clock in so you're not stressed out all the time. Margin financially would be having money left over at the end of the month. Wouldn't that be great? Okay, someone said, what is that? I'll, I'll explain it slowly. It's when money is left over at the end of the month. That's margin. I'll explain it slowly. It's a very life-changing thing. Margin is having a distance between you and temptation. I know where I get tempted, so I'm going to leave a large margin right there, and I'm not going to go into that area. That spirit and having that moral margin. I'm not going to go there. Brother Anwar, can you go and over and tell uh, Brother James or maybe Carissa to flick that light? We're going to get some light in here. We started recording, and uh, it's on it's on the website now. So if you go to the website, you can see the last week's sermon. So, but only if the light is on. <laughs> or you'll just see some shadow. Um, Margin is putting some preset buffers in your life. Now, I'm not going to go into that area. Margin might be deleting some numbers out of your phone. I'm not going to call those numbers anymore. I'm going to make a margin between me and that. Uh, margin might be putting a strong computer monitor blocker thing on your computer saying, I know at this time of the day I get tempted, so I'm going to put something on my computer where I won't go and look at something I'm not supposed to. Amen. I'm going to keep moving. <clears throat> margin could be having emotional capacity to deal with problems. So when your kid comes and drops a huge thing on you, you don't snap back at them real quick. How about that? Some emotional, emotional capacity. <clears throat> margin could mean, you know what? Three or four nights of the week, I'm not going to do nothing. Nothing on my schedule, three or four nights out of the week. Just not going to do nothing. I'm making margin in my life to not go crazy. Okay, some of you, you got it already, I can see. Margin could be having extra time or extra money to invest and to give to people that you love, to minister, ministries that you love. You have that margin in your life. Without that margin, you're always like, oh, I want to do more, but I can't. So we all understand we need to have some type of margin. Some type of margin we can live in, all right? Margin could simply be having time to think. Yes. To sit down, to slow down, to reflect, to meditate on God's Word and just say, oh. Margin could be having significant time alone with God Amen. every day. Yeah. You might, not a quick... God, thank you for this food. Some of us only say, the oh Lord, bless the food, amen. That's the only time we talk to him. Margin means we're going to give God more than the bless his food. Amen? Bless his meal, help me today. I mean, significant time meditating on the word of God. It's a 
very important. Simply put, margin is what most of us do not have. And I'm, con I'm completely convinced that the best things in life happen in the margins, not outside of the margins. I'm still teaching my son, no, not on the red, not on the other side of the red line, not on the other side of the red line. You have to stay in the margin, son. You, I'll give you an F. I'm teaching him, you're gonna blow up if you live outside of the margins. Amen. It's important. Luke chapter ten. Let's let's go there. Luke chapter ten. It's a great story about two different women. One decided that she didn't have margin. The other woman creates margin, creates it. It's, it's something you have to do, okay? And um, what she experienced, Jesus said, because you created that margin, you made space for me. This will never be taken away from you, okay? It's very important. This is what the scripture says. Pick it up in Luke 10, starting in verse 38. And Jesus and his disciples were on their way. He came to a village where a woman named Martha, Martha, opened her home to him. And she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was what? Martha was what? Distracted. Martha was distracted. Put that in your notes. Martha was distracted. Hmm. By all the preparations that had to be made. So this is, for ladies this is tough. For men this is tough too, but ladies this is tough. It's interesting that we have two women. They have the same exact opportunity. We've got Mary, Martha. Jesus, the Son of God, is present, bodily form, in the room. Okay? Everybody be like, ah. Mary created a moment with Jesus. Okay? She could have had things to do. She, she might have had laundry at her place that was undone, grocery shopping to do, run around with the kids. But Mary, in tidying up the house, she didn't do that. She said, just for a moment. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to embrace this moment with Jesus. She's taking time for Jesus. Everybody see it? Yes. Okay. But Martha, on the other hand, was like many of us, most of us. I'm distracted. She's waking out. Interesting to me that Martha isn't doing distracted and doing something sinful. It's not a sinful thing. What she's doing is a good thing. Yeah. What she's doing is a good thing. I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm running around. I'm taking the kids here. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. I'm staying busy. I'm staying busy. But Jesus said, Mary has chosen the best thing. There's good and there's best. There's good and there's better. Being busy and keeping our life spinning all the time, good. But there's better. There's better. Okay? And you say, well, the dishes needed to be done. Jesus is in the house. Jesus needs to be taken care of. Like, stuff's got to get done. Done, stuff's got to get done. You run yourself ragged. And Jesus says, hold on, come sit over here with me. Just sit. Relax. Yes, that's important. I'm more important. That's good. I'm better. Okay? We're talking about margin. Making margin in our life. She's distracted with good things from the best things. And someone said this, and I believe this with all my heart. You might want to write this down on the back of your notes. It's not there. If Satan, if Satan, our spiritual enemy, cannot make us really, 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 really bad, he'll just make us really busy. Amen. That's true. If he can't get you on the sin part, if he cannot get you on the, you know, go out and do the crazy stuff, then he'll just make you really, really busy and distract your life. Some of us, we become so busy at doing lesser things. Lesser things that we miss the most important things. And we're, we're distracted from the very best. Okay? I took a four-day vacation this week with Josh. Went up to our church's national conference. And it was awesome. 
was fantastic, and I just learned so much, and just, it was just refreshing. Do you know what vacation is? No. Do you know what vacation no. is? Vacation is where you take time off, and you do nothing. Wow. How about that? How about that? Vacation. And uh, so I took a few days to attend the conference. The first day I woke up and my mind like was so running on church this week, Friday church upstairs, Sunday church down here, Tuesday meeting, Wednesday meeting with another person, Monday morning got to meet with another person. And so as soon as I woke up, my hand, I don't know, my hand and my brain, my hand goes from my phone to my iPad. As soon as I wake up, I just grab it because I know I got 10 emails to answer and I got to do this. I got to do this. I'm on vacation and I can't click out of work mode. And I immediately go for it. And I felt grieved. And I said, Michael, stop it. Stop it right now. You are here on a break, a spiritual break, a physical break. I've been running like crazy, but my brain still goes to there. And it's, it's a distraction. It's a distraction. So I could, have, I could have just dove right into work and it even got to the point where I was like, well, maybe I can miss first session and just get these, get these things taken care of and then I'll go second session and go through. I was about to trade the good for the best. I was going to make a trade. And I noticed, I noticed, and I was like, nah, no, 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 no. My heart is so hungry for God, but my brain is going, you got to get some stuff done. You need to work, 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 Michael, work, Michael, work, Michael. Hmm? And it's a distraction. Martha's going, work, 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 work. These have to be done. Son of God is in the house. The dishes are dirty. God is here with dirty dishes. God is here with a bed that's not made. God is here. The bathroom doesn't look right. I'm talking to you. God is here in the flesh and everything needs to be perfect. And he doesn't care. He says, there's something better. Mary has chosen what is best over what needs to be done. Okay? It's very important. Conference wasn't the, the distraction for me. My work was the distraction for me. Okay? Many times right in front of us, the main thing is right there that we need to do. I need to set aside time for God. But we get distracted with the first thing in the morning, the first phone call, the first text message, the first this, the first that. And we leave God over there and we go this way all day long. We need to make margin for the Lord. Especially the first hour of the morning, that is the rudder of your day. The rudder of your ship is the first hour of your morning. Amen? Yeah. Like we, we had a big series on this at the beginning of the year. Last year we talked about making time for God, 15 minutes a day. If you can't make 15 minutes a day time for God, then we have to deal with other things in prayer. Okay? Maybe some deeper things that we've got to get out in prayer. 15 minutes a day. 15 minutes a day is the minimum. You read three chapters a day, you're going to read through the Bible in a year. Amen? Okay. Uh, so many of us think, uh, are consumed and obsessed and even possessed with this urgent need to get everything else done and then leave God outside. Okay? Mary and Martha, they're in this situation. Uh, I think it's kind of funny. Um, verse... 40, in the middle of the verse, Martha comes running to Jesus, and she says this, Jesus, don't you care that she's not doing what she's supposed to be doing? I see that in church all the time. I see it in church all the time. We even have, hey, Pastor Michael, don't you care that this, she's not even helping right now? Don't you care that he's doing that? Don't you care? I see it all the time. It's funny to me. Martha was absolutely convinced that what she was doing was correct. Martha 
Don't you care that she is not doing what I think she should be doing? I am right. You are wrong. Do you see it? Do you see it? You got to read between the lines here. I'm right. You're wrong. She's sitting there being lazy. Mary is lazy. She's saying, Jesus, take my side, please. Jesus, take my side. And herein lies the greatest challenge I have in teaching this series. Because when I do, some of you are totally convinced that the way you're living your life is necessary and right. And you're going to think, well, this is the way I've always lived. I'm busyness. Busyness. That's success, isn't it? Being busy is success, right? More of this. More of that. And more, better, bigger. Bigger house. Better car. Faster. Huh? Some, somebody, more food? <laughs> and you're convinced with everything in you that this is what truly matters in life. Running, 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 running. Forgetting the fact that Jesus said, broad is the road and wide is the path that leads to destruction. And the Bible says that many people are on the broad road doing what everybody else is doing, right? Running like crazy, like hamster in the wheel. You've seen the hamster in the wheel? It's never gonna get off that wheel. And everybody's hamsters. We all have to run this hard. We all have to keep this pace up. Do you see that nice car, Maserati? I gotta get my Maserati, I gotta work harder, work harder, work harder. I almost took one out yesterday just on purpose. <laughs> But small is the gate and narrow is the road. Narrow is the road that leads to life. Life. L-I-F-E, life. It's a hard word, life. Real life, exciting life. Narrow is the road that leads to life. Amen. It's not broad, it's not what everybody else is doing. They're going crazy. Hmm? That's why the words of Paul in Romans chapter 12, verse 2 are so important. Romans 12, 2. It's not on the screen. I don't believe. Write it down in the back of your notes. Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world. Amen. Amen. Romans 12, verse 2. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world. God is saying, what everybody else is doing, we can't do. The rat race they're running, the schedule they're keeping, not for you. Huh? Don't be conformed to what everybody else is doing. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Everybody running themselves ragged, no margin in their life. Miss one paycheck and oh, the world is blowing up. That's the way the world does it. God says, don't be conformed to the, don't do that. I got a better way for you. Amen. Amen? Amen? Why do we think that what everyone else does is God's best? It's a good question. So this guy's working 90 hours a week. He's making this much money, you know, being outwardly blessed, right, financially. And everybody thinks, yeah, that's what I need to do. I'll follow that guy and be blessed like that. No, no. I see his car, I see his house, I see his family too. Not so great. Nice house, nice car though. Family not so great. Don't be conformed to the world. Don't, don't be conformed to the pattern of the world. Mm -hmm. It goes on to say this. Don't be like everybody else, but instead be transformed. It's my favorite scripture. By the renewing of your mind, then you will be able to attest and approve what the will of God is, His perfect will. I'm not pushing for minor changes. I'm going to push a little harder the next couple of weeks. I'm not pushing for minor changes in your life. Uh, 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 if minor changes would have made the difference, you would have already had a change. I'm going to push for a little bit of major change, okay? Is that all right? Yeah. Okay. Praise Love God. Us. Amen. 
radical life-altering decisions because I'm convinced with all my heart that the way most of us are doing life, running, 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 is con contrary to God's best. Amen. Contrary to God's best. We're going to learn to take time aside and slow down. Okay? Jesus, tell her to help me. Jesus, tell her to help me do what we're supposed to be doing. I am right. This is the way it should be. Jesus says, no, your production mentality, your producing mentality is not right. It's wrong. Her sitting there at my feet, that's right. Okay? Can you see wrong and right? You know the difference? Okay? I know you need to pay bills. You need to sit at feet, Jesus' feet more than you need to pay bills. Amen. Is that cool? Yes. Clear? Yes. Trying to make it, make it plain, Pastor. Make it plain. I used to shout that at me in the church. Make it plain. <laughs> Your production mindset causes you to miss the moment. Missing the moments that God has for you. Luke 10, verse 41, 42. Martha, Martha. Jesus says it. Martha, Martha. Maybe she didn't hear him the first time. Martha, she ignored him. Uh, Martha? I don't think he was saying it bad to her, like, Martha, Martha. I heard the preach. Martha, Martha. Jesus isn't angry at Martha. She's not listening. He said, Martha? Then he said, maybe he was afraid of something getting thrown at him. He's like, Martha? Uh, I mean, you all right? Wait for the pain. Like, you all right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. The Lord answered, You are concerned and worried and upset about many things. I'm upset about what happened this morning. I'm upset about this, the dishes. I'm upset at this. And Jesus goes, You're upset about a lot of stuff. You're worried about a lot of stuff. You got emotions going on about a lot of stuff that is totally, completely out of whack. Martha, Martha. You see it? The Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing. Everybody say one thing. One thing. See that? But only one thing is needed. One thing. That's it. And Mary has chosen what is better. You all working crazy. But Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. She made a space for Jesus in what could have been a very, very busy time for her. Doing a good thing, but she said, you know, I'm, I'm put that aside for a little bit. I'm going to just spend time with Jesus. That's called margin. I'm making margin for the Lord. I'm going to be right in the middle of the lines, and I'm putting him in the margin. I'm putting him in between the margin. The best things in life happen in between the margin lines, not outside of the margin lines. That's when we get very, very, just, you ever been just bogged down with life? You're not even reading your Bible and a month goes by? You feel like crap? Hello? Both hands. Okay. Here's what I want you to understand. The choice is yours. That's it. God's not going to make the margin for us. The choice is yours. And you're going to be tempted to fight back throughout this whole series. And say, Pastor, you just don't understand. You just don't understand. You just don't understand. You only talk for an hour on a Sunday. That's what I do, right? I only talk for one hour on a Sunday. Don't know what it's like to have financial pressure. The choice is yours. The choice is yours always. Always, always, always. You say, but my boss. No, the choice is yours. But my kids. No, yeah. the choice is yours. Yeah. Create the margin. Let's just do this. Let's just talk practically. Uh, this should be obvious to you, but I want to go ahead and say it anyway. What happens when we live a margin-less life? What happens? No margin. But what happens when margin decreases? All right? Two things. Write them down. If you're taking notes. When margin decreases, your stress increases. Oh, my God. Amen. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. Oh, man. When you're running late and your margin decreases, what happens? 
stress increases. Some of you on the way to church today, one of your people was running a little late. Hurry up! Hurry up! You're running late. You're running late. You're gonna make me late to church. I'm gonna miss the first song. You're like elbow someone. Hurry up! You're yelling and screaming. Get into church. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Jesus is great. Shut up. Make me late. But don't elbow your neighbor. <laughs> Elbows are illegal in church. <laughs> the same is true financially. If your financial margin decreases, what happens in your relationships, your marriages? Huh? You start fighting over stupid things. Huh? You spent what? You spent what? Well, when your margin decreases, then you get upset. When you got plenty, there's not an issue. I just bought a pair of that. I bought some new shoes. I bought this. No problem. Huh? That margin. Financial margin decreases, your stress increases. The second thing, if you're taking notes, is this. As your margin decreases, your relational intimacy decreases. Oh my God. As margin increases, your relational intimacy decreases. You see it all the time. Those of you who are busy, you're frustrated, you're challenged, your mind rarely disengages. You know, from the things you think are important. You go home and you're still on work mode. Like I was the other day. I woke up and on work mode. No, we gotta like, unplug. Unplug. I was at conference this week, you know, my, the greatest ARC pastors in the nation, you know, in the world. The guy started with, you know, 40 people in a room, and got 60,000 members. It's not bad. It's not too, too shabby. <laughs> Uh, and he's just like, you just got to unplug. You got to take your Sabbath day. Sabbath day? Everybody know what Sabbath is? You have to. Like God commanded it, but he didn't do it like commanding it because he says, you know, he says, hey, come set aside a whole day of the week. I worked six, rested one. That's the pattern for your life. Like, I, so I... I got so much stuff to do. And just the thought of a Sabbath day to me, like, freaked me out. I, I said, Lena, we need to take Sabbath. She's like, what? What, what day are you going to do that? I'm like, Monday. She's like, no. I'm like, Tuesday. No, this, this, this. Wednesday? No. Wednesday? I'm like, oh, Thursday? No. And Friday? No. Saturday? No, not Saturday. And I'm like, well, my whole week, that's gone. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to take a Sabbath day. You are too. And so we're working on that right now. We are going to come to a common ground. Amen. It's hard. It's hard to do that. But what we're going to make, we're going to do it. Sabbath. Sabbath. Hmm. When you're so busy, when you're so busy, you're so busy, it doesn't matter. You can be with the closest people around you, but if you're so busy in your mind, you're not even present in your present. Amen. The other day, I saw a couple sitting down, um, talking, eating dinner, and I was like, oh, that's nice, a couple on a date. They're both like this. <laughs> not even talking to each other around the phone. You know, just put it down for a minute. Have a little one-on-one <laughs> -on -one here. But we went out to eat the other day. It was a family of four. And I thought, that's nice. The family's eating together. Kids and parents, you know, family of four. And I look over, and each one of them was on the cell phones. Kids and adults, just on the cell phones, not even talking to each other. No margin. Distraction, completely. <laughs> completely. You know, someone is Facebooking. Another person is Instagramming. Another person is tweeting. Tweeting. Really? It's time to eat, not tweet. <laughs> Put your tweeter down for a second. Stop touching your tweeter. <laughs> Quit playing with your tweeter in, at dinner. Oh. Just put it down. Your relational intimacy decreases, not just with people, but also with God. With God. Our relational intimacy with God like goes through the floor. Yeah. 
I can't tell you how many times I've run into people that I haven't seen in church in a while that say, hey, Pastor, hey, buddy. I, I just ran into one this morning. Where you been? How you been? Uh, work and this and that, and I got busy. Busy? Yeah, I've just been busy. This and that's happening. I've just been busy. Too busy. Crazy. And you say, oh, I used to be close to the Lord. I used to read my Bible every morning, and I used to pray. But I got too busy. I got too busy. It's a choice. It's a choice. We've got to make that margin in our life. And we think it's normal, though. We think it's normal. I'm busy. This is why so many of us live marginless lives. Why is it that so many of us plan on slowing down one day, but we really never do? I plan on slowing down. <laughs> the plan didn't work, so I'm continuing to run like crazy. No. You got to hit the pause button and back out. Huh? Why is it that we say money doesn't make us happy? So many of us fight and scrap to get it. <laughs> All right. The bottom line is because most of us do not fully trust God. And that's it. It's we don't have enough faith that God can handle my life better than I can. If I just take my 15, 20 minutes with him. 15, 20 minutes. You know, you know how much I can make in 15 or 20 minutes? Come on, have a lot. It'll be better if you hang out with the Lord. You ain't making a million in 15. Hopefully soon you will. There will be something to happen. Amen. I'm believing for prosperity in the church, but just that 20 minutes ain't going to kill you. That 20 minutes with the Lord is going to give you life. Margin, margin. You got to, hey, I got to put God in his right place in my life. Okay? Do we trust God that you can handle the details? You can handle all the details of my life. You can handle my physical body. You can handle my finances. You can handle my relationships with my family. Do we trust Him that He can do that? That we can pull back and we can create margin for God. Do what Mary did. I'm going to choose what is better than what is good. Okay? Look what Martha missed out on by doing something that was really good. Really, really, really good. She missed out on an intimate time with Jesus Christ. In the flesh. In the flesh she missed out on it. Mary got it. And Martha missed out on a good thing. It's crazy. <laughs> Crazy. When a great opportunity comes to your life, don't be so busy that you miss it. God might have something huge for you right around the corner, right there, and you can like stare right at it and be so busy that you miss an opportunity. It might be a job, might be a promotion. Huh? Might be something that Jesus has handpicked for you. Because he says he's able to do exceedingly abundantly, right? So God is saying, I'm going to bring you a lot of stuff that's my best will for you. But if we're so busy, we just... And miss it. Go right past it because of busyness. No margin for the Lord. And in a word, you know what it's called? Idolatry. Write it down if you want to. I know it's hard. It's hard preaching. I'm hoping the back row will come back glad next week. <laughs> we are elevating good things above the best thing. We're distracted by all the production and worldliness. I got to have a bigger house, and then that's going to help my marriage. No, it's not. You're just going to yell louder. <laughs> Got to have a nicer car that will make me feel good about myself. Therefore, I've got to get the promotion so I can sustain this lifestyle that I wanted. Got to go to this meeting so everybody will think well of me. 
If I don't go, then they won't really even think about me. Got to have my kids involved in every single sport and every single opportunity because that makes me feel better about me if they're involved in something. That's a little more. I know I went through a time. I'm just preaching you. I'm preaching over here. Huh? Got to have the perfect body because the way my outside body looks really makes me feel better because my soul is really sad. How about it? How about it? We think, I've got to produce more and more and more. Because I'm so empty, I've got to produce on the outside. That's what it comes down to. I'm not being filled with God in my personal time. So if I just work really hard and have stuff, the stuff will make me feel better. And I'm just empty inside. Empty. I am preaching. So what we're going to do is we're going to have what I call a come to Jesus moment. All right? You ever have one of those? Yeah. And the Lord sits you down. I've had plenty of moments like that where the Lord sits me down. Amen? The next few weeks I'm going to challenge you, push you a little harder than you've been pushed in a long time. Sadly, some of you are not going to change uh, with this margin thing. I've done this long enough to know it breaks my heart that, that, that some of you will see it, you're going to feel it, you're going to believe it, but you're not going to act on it. And um, some of you are, though, and I'm very excited about it, and we'll, we'll keep going. God said, don't be conformed to the way the world does things. Don't follow them. I like the Message Bible. The Message Translation says, but, but come on and learn the rhythm of God's grace. The rhythm of God's grace. It's different. We're not doing things the world does. It. We act different. We're not of this world. Huh? Something different. Something different. The rhythm of God's grace. This is how you choose what is better over what is good and what needs to be done. Okay? When it comes down to it, God's not going to say anything about your house, your car, your kid's education, anything. He's going to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And if you're just busy with life, that is not the statement going to come out of his mouth. Because you're totally leaving him off to the side and saying, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Okay? Come to Jesus. Here's what Jesus said in Matthew 11, 20, 29. Jesus said it like this. Next one. Matthew 11, 20, 29. Jesus said this. Come unto me, all you who are weary and burdened. Anybody have a burden? Uh, I'll add a few words. Come to me, all you who are stressed out. Uh, come to me, all you who are overwhelmed and can't get it all done in 24 hours. Okay. Come to me, single parents who are about to fall apart. Come to me, businessman who feels like you're going to lose it all. Come to me, mom that has no margin in her life. Come to me, all of us. All of us. Come to me. Come to me. Jesus said this. What will I give you? He says, if you come to me, I will give you rest. 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 Close your eyes for a second. Rest. What's that feel like? He says, come to me and I'll give you rest. Some of us don't rest at all. Huh? Could you use a little? He says, come to me. I got rest for you. Rest, like real good rest. Some people get a full night's sleep and wake up tired. Why is that? Because your spirit and your mind are... Jesus says, if you come to me, I'll give you rest. You can get a full eight and feel great. Okay? Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. 
take me on you. Boom. That's instant. Take my yoke upon you. That's like, that's salvation right there. And learn from me. So he says, boom, salvation, instant, and learn of me. This is going to be a lifelong process of you learning about me. I'm big. I'm not small. I'm God. You're going to have to learn about me. Christians come to church. I got saved. And then they don't dig into the word of God. Don't, don't become a student of the Bible. They never learn to do this part. They never learn from me. That's why ASAP Church Bible College that's starting very soon is very important for you. And learn of me. God has a way. He says it needs to be learned. It needs to be learned. It's not automatic ingrained in us. It needs to be learned. Learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. Doesn't that sound awesome? Amen. Rest for your soul, not always busy and crazy. Rest. Let that phrase just sink in for a moment. Rest for your soul. Peace, huh? Tranquility. Oof. Rest. For, rest for me, Lord. You got rest for my soul. You mean I can relax? Amen. <sighs> a lot of us don't know what rest is. We're going to talk about rest next week. Some of you go, I'm going to take this vacation and rest. Six day vacation. The first three days you're still winding down. The next three days you're ramping up to get back to work. <laughs> That's me. Hey. <laughs> no rest. No rest. Go on vacation. Bungee jumping, skiing, rock climbing, mountain climbing, come back home. You're ready for vacation again. What did I do? I just went on an adventure, but I didn't go on a rest. Huh? Good. Those of you who are not married, it's interesting how sometimes you can fall victim to this. Most of you... You feel like, if I don't have something on my schedule, I'm insignificant. I'm a loser. I have to have something happening all the time. If something's not happening all the time, I'm, I'm not insignificant. I don't have any work. That's not true at all. That means you got a moment to rest. Huh? Moms. I can talk to moms for a minute. I talk to a lot of moms all the time. I say, I don't have any time for me. I don't have any time for me, and if I did something for me and not for my kids, I would feel like I'm doing something wrong. That's a very sick, unhealthy thought. You are important enough to hand the kids off to husband, babysitter, police, anyone, and just get away from them. I'm just thinking of options. I'm just thinking of options. There's lots of options. I'm just trying to do that. Send them away. Away with you, children. Let's send my kid off to military school. Away with you. Come back disappointed. Men? Men? I've got to make more, I've got to conquer more, I've got to achieve more, because this is how I will show love. That is idolatry. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -mm. That's not how we show love. Having more. Have, I, if I have more, that proves my love for... No. Uh-uh. Psalm 46 says this. Psalm 46. Be still. Just that. Be still. Just relax. Relax. God says relax. And know that I am God. I've got it. Relax. We need to learn how to be still. Hmm? If I come hard on this, it's because this has been a, 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 a battle for me for 20 years. And I'm learning how to battle better. I really am. But I am a workaholic. Like, workaholic. It's a disease. Uh, and in my personal development time, I like to listen to some of my mentors' podcasts. How many listen to a uh, leadership podcast at least once a week? 
Every one of you needs to listen to a leadership podcast at least once a week or do it every day. Someone that leads better than you. You are a leader. So if you're not leading, then you're not leading. But you are a leader. So it's good to listen to someone who's gone and is making a difference in the world. Huh? Amen. We get into a rut when we stop learning. Okay? Um, so I listen to our ARC leadership, and I always have something that challenges me and something that uplifts me. So leadership podcast for me is always very challenging because I have a struggle with that. So that's why I go to school and listen and watch the guy. Uh, you know, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I mean, his church is 140,000 people. And I figured he can teach me a thing or two. <laughs> uh, so I listen, and it's always a challenge, and I walk away from it going, oh, how am I going to do that? And it's not easy, not easy, right? And then I listen to an uplifting message. So I'm challenged, but I'm uplifted too, right? So it's very good. Um, and here's something that I've learned. This is where we're going to start this week. It's very simple. Your assignment, you can write it down on the back of your notes. Your assignment is five minutes a day this week. Five minutes a day this week. Okay? Where you are not going to produce or do anything. You're not going to think anything. You're not going to do anything. You're just going to take five minutes alone with God in the presence of God. Turn on your favorite worship music and just take time with Him. Five minutes. Let's start there. Baby steps. If you can go more than five, great. But we need to start somewhere, okay? Five minutes. And just listen. Just listen. God's always talking. He doesn't shut up. We don't hear because we don't slow down. Mm -hmm. And he's speaking. What's he speaking? What is he speaking? He's speaking his word. He's not speaking random stuff that's not inside the Bible. He's not going to tell you, go do this, go do that. No, no, no. He's speaking his word. Okay? Just listen. Five minutes a day. Worship music, listen. Not worship music in my car driving to work. <laughs> Don't cheat. <laughs> Everybody want to cheat. Well, I did. No, 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 no. <laughs> just chill out. Five minutes, get along with God, break open your Bible, and just relax. Fifteen minutes a day, you can read through the Bible in one year. If you've never read through the Bible, fifteen minutes a day, read through the Bible. If you want a tip, I'll give you a little pointer here. Quick Scan Bible. Amen. <laughs> Quick Scan Bible is the most phenomenal Bible ever. It just highlights in black, in bold, the most important words in a verse. Okay, all the words are important, right? But, uh, let, me, let me think of a verse. Uh, Love me, you'll be my disciple. He took out six words. Six words that don't, are filler, what we call filler words, right? Well, it takes out all the filler words, and you'll blow through the Bible so fast. But not in a bad way. In a good way. You're, you're retaining the scripture. You're retaining the meaning and the importance without, I mean, try to read through Revelation. Try to read through Revelation on your own. <laughs> and use the quick scan Bible for Revelation. It'll help you in your five minutes. It'll help you in your five minutes. Then you can tweet about that. <laughs> Amen? It's, a, it's the first and significant, significant step in creating margin for your spiritual life. Mary was doing what was right. Martha was doing what was right, but not necessary. What Mary was doing was the real necessity. And it won't be taken away from Mary. Your five minutes, your ten minutes, your twenty minutes will not be taken away from you. Amen. A well-watered garden. You ever see a backyard that is just trashed and dry and nasty 
and, and, and all, all the grass is dead and the, the bushes are just shriveled. He says, your life is going to be like a well-watered garden. Green, fruit everywhere. This is what God's promise is for us. He will guide us always, satisfy all of our needs, and we're going to look beautiful. Beautiful looking garden. You want to just go, and I want to go into that garden. That's what God says for us. Amen? Yeah. Rather be parched and thirsty, we're going to be well watered. I love that. When you stop living according to the patterns of the world, but you instead live according to the rhythms of God's grace, this is His promise. Amen? Let's pray. God, I ask that your Holy Spirit would pierce our hearts. God, I thank you in advance for ASAP Church and the people that are going to say, God, yeah, I ask that you give them courage to make these adjustments just for five minutes a day, Lord. And God, I, I for one, I refuse to surrender to the culture of this world. I refuse to surrender and be conformed and patterned after the world when you said, come and follow me. Lord, help me. Help this church to hear your voice. Father God, I'm asking that you help guide us. As we're praying today, let's, let's just start this simple, simple thing this week. Let's create a holy moment. Five minutes. Five minutes a day. Some of you, this might be a radical change for you. Some of you, this might be real easy. But let's commit. Lord, I'm going to commit to you my first five minutes of every day. I'm just going to give you the opportunity to speak to me. It might be really tough for some of you, but I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that if you'll do this, the next seven days, you're going to hear the voice of God. Maybe you haven't heard God speak to you in a long time. If you're given the time, He'll speak. If you'll open your Bible to Him, He'll speak to you. If you say, yeah, I'm in, I want that. I know it's crazy, but I'll give up at least five minutes a day. If that's you, great. Great. We're not going to produce anything during that time. This is what's called becoming a disciple of Christ. Putting God first. Putting God first. And, and, and Lord, as we remove the things that are idols that are set up in our life, I ask that you fill that area with your presence. I ask that you fill that spot in our life with your presence and, and with the purpose that you really have for our lives. Instead of running like crazy, I ask that you fill that with your purpose, Lord. As you keep praying today, I want everybody to listen really carefully, carefully to me. Some of you, you think you're, what you're doing is right. What I'm doing is right. You're like Martha. What I'm doing is right. I'm doing the right thing. I'm doing the right thing. I'm doing the right thing. I'm working this. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. And God is saying, I want you just to come and sit at my feet. What you're doing is good, but it is not the best. And you can't have me doing good. You can't have me just doing good. Some of you running after things. I gotta have this thing. I gotta have this thing. I gotta have this thing. And you're coming up empty. You keep running and you're coming up empty. You know who I'm talking to. Some of us, we just do things. It's just natural for us. God says, pull aside. Come back with me. Sit down. And relax. Get rid of that thing out of your life. If you're pursuing things all day long and you're not slowing down and pursuing God, then you're pursuing idols. Some of us throw around Christian, very simple. I'm a Christian. But we live as the world and we're patterned by the rest of the world. God has issue with that. He takes issue with that. He's not upset. 
but he takes issue that you're treating him like somebody on the side. Treating him like, you know, someone that you don't need. Father, I ask right now in your presence that you pinpoint the areas of our life to us in our hearts where we need to make adjustments to create margin for you. Lord, I pray that this five minutes a day would become sweet, sweet, intimate moments with you where you can speak to us and we can hear your voice clearly. God, I ask that you give each member, each member here, certain scriptures during this time, five minutes a day, Lord, that they can hold on to for the rest of their life that are going to be transforming life-giving scriptures, God. Speak to us your word. Speak to us through your word. Something that can never be taken away. Something that can never be taken away from us. Lord, in our five minutes, I ask that your rest come upon ASAP Church. That your peace and your tranquility and that your joy and your love can start to flow from that place of rest in our lives, oh God. In Jesus, in Jesus, amen. Does that sound good? Five minutes, is that not too hard?